uppercut, uppercut, sonic boom! Well, hello there, humans and bees earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and whoever you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. Welcome back to channel, I'm Bushka, and today, just ahead of the opening of season 12, I'm going to give you all a heads up on how you can rate in solos, or solo squads, if you want, uh, all the way up to ace, hell, you could do this to Conqueror, and this is me playing ace on the Asia server, and getting 22 rating points in a game, and coming second on a wide open Miramar map. How do you do it, Bushka? Well, sit down, relax, and I'm going to break it down for you and let you know how you do it. I'm also going to show you some examples of gunfights that I've had to take in games, ways you can work around things to give yourself the best chance of winning, and how you can even have a little bit of fun while playing in this style that is very much about circle management and you know, living. Um, firstly, we need to understand how rating works. There's five different categories that rating is broken down into. There's kill rating, damage, survival, supplies, and obviously uh, the big one, support, which is pretty funny when you're playing solo squads like I am here on the Asia server. I say Asia server all the time because I get so many idiots that come in my Instagram feed and my YouTube channel and so try that on the Asia server because they think that Australia is somewhere to the left of North America. Um, I always play on the Asia server. All my aces have been on the Asia server. So you're a pacifist. There's a car at that compound, drive away. This is the first thing that you need to get through your head. If you want to just rate using this method, and a lot of people will want to do this because one, they might have a low end device and they've never been able to do well in, in games because they try and hot drop, they try and have gunfights, and they, they can't compete with guys like me who are uh, teched up to the max and, and rolling out the big devices. Two, some people just haven't been playing PUBG Mobile very long and aren't very good at gunfights. They're not very good at the tactical side of the game and they want to learn. And this is a great way to both learn how to play the game, uh, enjoy yourself and actually get some high place finishes and maybe some nice gear. And three, a lot of people can't afford to buy nice parachute skins and all that kind of thing. And this is a great way to get some kind of unique ones. So let's talk about this. You want to trash loot. You are going to drop the very edges of the map. You don't have to drop the edges, but you have to drop areas that aren't super contested. And you occasionally you'll get a bot turn up. That's great. That's like a 10 cent delivery crate. You want to trash loot and the things you really, really, really want to get are meds and smokes. You'll pick up ammo and guns and all that kind of stuff along the way. And it's nice. But when you think about this, an eight scope is brilliant, but it's not going to be the be all and end all. Uh, and if you find another squad that turns up in your same kind of area, just leave. Just get in your car and go. You might get some kills, fine, that's grand. But in the long run, you're risking everything for absolutely nothing. The later you get in the game, the more you may actually want to start taking engagements. And that might sound counterintuitive, but the idea behind this is all that you have to do is survive long enough to get rating. If you have been around for long enough to get rating, then you've achieved your goal. Every game you go into just has to be a positive outcome. For instance, look at this. There's 24 people left alive. There's a car coming up behind me. I'm in a car. It's nearly out of petrol. They're going to push me and they're going to follow me. So I stop the car. I go back. I shoot at them. That makes them all get out. And this is a horrible engagement. You'd never take this engagement, right? Because there's four guys over there on a ridge line. I just shoot so they think I'm getting involved. And then I hunker down, run back here. My car doesn't have much petrol left. I move the car forward. So they've now all got out of the car. They're running around on a hill. They think, great, this guy's going to peek us. We've got four guys. We're going to be able to get him. I just drive my car away. It's got no petrol. So I'm going to have to take the engagement. But I've done it in an intelligent way where I've broken them up. Then I leave my car there, I bugger off, I get an overlook on their expected entry point, and we then take the fight from there. So whatever happens, the whole point of this entire exercise is to get rating. The longer you delay a fight, the longer you're alive in game. The longer you're alive in game, the more your survival rating goes up. The longer you're alive in game, the more your survival rating goes up, the more overall rating you get at the end. And then you take the engagement, try and do it in a, like that guy didn't even have his gun out. He thought we, I was gone. Like I've I've pegged these guys around for a couple of minutes and now it's a one-on-one -on -one engagement the whole time. So, and this is me with the Mark 47 Mutant, which has been nicely buffed this patch, by the way. I'll be doing a video on the Mark 47 Mutant very, very shortly. The other reason you want to do this on Miramar is because on Miramar, uh, the game's longer. The longer the game goes, the better your survival rating. 
I mean, this is the longer you survive, the better your survival rating. And I'll show you just this little clip from the end of this after I loot these guys and take their AWM. But did you see how I made that engagement take like three minutes? There's now 17 people left alive, uh, 14 people left alive. I'm in the blue again, and you are going to get used to living in the blue. You're absolutely going to get used to living in the blue. And you've got to start taking targets of opportunity. The, the, the basic idea of this is you don't touch your guns until top 25 if you can help it. So you're driving along and you are looting in the blue. People don't hang around in the blue. If you're looting in the blue and you are taking every single med kit you can find, you can really live for a very, very long time. Let me give you some numbers here on the reason this is so, so very effective. Uh, the first circle, people freak out about the circles. And if you're a new player, that's understandable. You see the blue zone come in, you start losing health, losing health. You're like, oh my God, what am I going to do? You can just boost through like the first three circles. The first circle takes 0.4% of your health per tick. 0.4. The second circle takes 0.6% of your health per tick. The third circle takes 8.8% of your health per tick. You've got to get all the way through to the fourth circle before the blue starts taking 1% of your health per tick. That's just 1%. You could boost through that, man. That's like absolutely easy peasy. Pick up all the bandages you can, by the way. The more bandages you have, the better off you're going to be. Um, bandages, first aids, med kits. And you're going to see here there's a guy who's been camping this little compound area or has rotated in late. And we're going to talk a little bit more about rotating as we progress here. And he is going to try to axe me. Now, I'm happy to, to, to bail out of the car here because he's on my right. And when you jump out of the car, you jump out on the left, right, which is the driver's side. So as soon as I start getting hit here, oh, oh okay, out, inside. Oh, pick up a smoke on the way through. Happy days. Uh, and then I'm going to wait for the blue to come in. And then I'm going to bail out the back. And I'm going to gatekeep him in the blue because something you will have as a massive advantage over most of the other uh, players that you're going to come across is they are all looting for gunfights. They are looting to be able to fight the hardest they possibly can. You are going to take targets of opportunity, but something you can do really, really well is live in the blue better than them. They're going to be resource deficient because you've got like 40 bandages, a uh, bunch of, you know, boosts, um, med kits and first aids, and you are planning to live in the blue for as long as you can. They're not used to that. They are not playing that way, and you can absolutely utilize that and turn that to your advantage. So we've talked about the pacifist lifestyle. We've talked about trash looting the edges of the map. Uh, and now we're gonna talk about how you actually have to get there. Now, even up to the sixth circle, that's only gonna take 5% of your health per tick. And if you've been stockpiling your medkits and your band-aids and your boosts, and you're always boosted in this, you're always boosted, you're in the blue, you can get by with 5%, uh, and the fifth circle is 3% of your health, right? And you can absolutely manage this stuff all the time. It's not until you get to the last couple of circles that it actually becomes super tough to get it done. So always staying boosted. now. Let's talk about the tough stuff, the circle. When you get to the last couple of circles, you can see that this is top 20 now. Asia TPP, ace. I mean, this is this is the circle. The blue is obviously the external part of the circle, the barrier. The white is the circle itself, the safe zone. And that, you, this is where I'm going. This little area just at the top northwestern corner of the circle, in my example circle, uh, I'll point it out for you right now. Just there, that's called the short side of the zone, where there's not much space between the blue line and the white line. Everyone else is going to be rotating in like that. That's a killing zone. Everyone dies in there. That is where people die on rotation. What you want to do is line yourself right up at the back here of the circle and be able to watch as the zone pushes in and clears anyone and everyone. Now, I will take engagements from this part of the map on if I feel like being a pest is going to help me. I'm not trying to kill everyone. I just want to, one, blow up their vehicle so they've got to run in on foot if at all possible, and two, be a pest. Take targets of opportunity where there is little to no danger to me, right? This is absolutely easy peasy, lemon squeezy. This is what you want to do. And you want to always stay short side of the circle when at all possible. See all those guys over there? Like, I'm happy to get a knock, but I'm shooting the car. Um... The reason I'm shooting their car is I want them to be under severe duress. Like if they've got to go in in a car and some other squad can shoot it a few times and it blows up, then awesome stuff for me. Take out their wheels, be a complete pest. I just 
don't want them to be able to rotate in very comfortably. And then we're a pacifist. This is why you pick up the smokes. This is the absolute reason you pick up all the smokes. It's Miramar. It's a huge wide open circle. What are you going to do? There's 15 people left. There's squads everywhere. I'm going to drive to the very middle of the very, very last circle. And then I am going to sit in smoke right next to my car. Okay. There's a squad coming in. Give them a bit of curry. Let them go on with it. Cool. I'm now going to let everyone kill each other. Look at people dying at the play zone. Look at all the knocks going down. Um, I don't care. I'm not here to fight. I'm not here to assert my silverback masculine dominance over anyone. Uh, what I'm here to do is survive for as long as humanly possible. And to do that, I've got smokes. I've got meds. If the blue comes in and it becomes a heal fight, these guys are screwed because I've got more meds than anyone else in the map right now. Like I am eyeball to eyeball with medical supplies and I'm not even going to throw the grants now. I just hold on them, hold your grant until it explodes in your hand and there's your smoke. Boring, hey. I'm going to get 20 rating out of this at ace. Like this is, this is, this is, this is ridiculous, but this is the game. It's not battle who did the most kills. It's battle who survived the longest. All these other squads are wrecking each other. There's 10 people left. The best position on the map right now is a full squad on the top of that hill to the south. I also switch to the FPP view when I'm in the smoke because you can obviously see a lot better like that. It's, it's a much better view. Um, and I can't push a full squad up there. Like, it's crazy. There's seven left, and they're tearing everyone apart. That's fine. I'll get another smoke out. My only regret in life is that I don't have enough smokes here, but it doesn't matter anyway, because that squad at the top has got the perfect position on the map. They're shooting me. That's fine. So now I'm going to knock the wheels out of my car, because the circle's rotated into me. That's fine. And I'm going to blow it up before they have a chance to blow it up. And then I'm just going to go get behind it again. And, you know... It's, it's like there's a guy up there. We'll switch to FPP view. Much better for this kind of thing. Get a knock. All adds up. Damage helps. Damage, survival rating. Remember, the other thing is you get, you get rating for support, right? How much have you healed? Well, I've healed a lot. I've actually healed 555 points worth of um, healing. And I'm completely addicted to painkillers. <laughs> and... Uh, this will get you rating. And then you can do this and adjust your play style as you do it, as you play. Like uh, if you're starting off in gold and you're a new player, you can do this. And that will let you manage how the game works and it'll let you get better at how the game works and you can do all that kind of stuff and that's great. Or you can play more aggressively and use this as a base. You can choose as the game goes on. Like if you get an airdrop, you might want to be more snipey. That's it. I, I just picked up minus two for kill rating plus 25 for survival rating plus 22 for overall rating eight 932 damage um you can go all the way to conqueror with this if you wanted to do it i don't do it but this is completely legit and something you can do and when people play tournaments they play a lot like this they uh you know, you get four kills in a tournament. That's pretty good. Like, you've done really, really well. Like, yeah, public scrims, public games are not the same. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll get around to them. And until next time, look after yourselves and stay safe on Z Battlefield. Bye for now.